know that your time is very precious. Uh, but nonetheless, we're very thankful for giving us time to learn more about your story and how you became an entrepreneur and also to share uh, the lessons that you've learned uh, to us. Um, some of us are budding entrepreneurs. Uh, some of us have different career paths. But nonetheless, as he said, a lot of the paths cross anyway and majority of the industries will be connected. So I think it's very useful that we learn from one another. And I'm pretty sure that basically everyone here in the audience is incredibly excited for you to share your knowledge and your experiences. And I'm, we're going to be starting the questions with dreams. Mikey? Okay. So first, uh, Dr. Ma, um, well, a lot of the time you talk about why it's important to you know, find your dreams. But the thing is, a lot of students nowadays find it difficult to figure out what they want to do with their lives. May we know uh, your story? How did you got, get into a technopreneurship? And how did you know that your dream belonged in establishing Alibaba and e-commerce, essentially? Thank you so much. Yeah, a lot of people say, Jack, your time is so precious and uh, no, not necessarily. Um, if your time do not spend on the things that you feel important or same thing that you are, you extremely love to do it, or you're not spending time for the future. That time normally no use. So, be spending time with the students, with the schoolmates, and discussing young people. Because when I look at the young people, your eyes it reminds me my my past. So I think spending time with you is my honor. Uh, this is the time the most valuable thing. <laughs> Um, discuss, discuss about the dreams. I think like any kids, I had a lot of dreams when I was young and most of the dreams never came true. Now I'm trying to, <laughs> I try to make, now when I'm 53 years old, I, uh, I've been working very, very extremely hard in the past 30 years, 35 years. Now I think uh, it's time to think about my young the, the childhood dreams to sing songs and be an actor and uh, <laughs> painting, everything. I want to try everything that I, because you have to work hard, they can realize a lot of dreams that sound stupid and crazy when you are young. Um, let me say this, when I started, uh, well, by the way, I, I said, I worked very hard when I was a student university, in the university even. I was the chairman of the students union of my university and of my city. I spent, I would say, 70% of my time serving in the students' union, supporting young people. That gave me a lot of, lot of experience that working with the people, the people relationship, helping people. By helping people, I get a lot of fun, and get, when I get more fun, I help more people. So this is why when I never got a, even one day of training to do business, when I start my my company, I know how to deal with the other people. So it's not only knowledge that as a student they should learn. You should learn how to serve people, how to work with people, how to team up with the people. So in the future, remember one thing that we know IQ, EQ. If you want to be successful, you should have great EQ. Because EQ knows how to work with people. If you, no matter how smart you are, but you never know how to, how to work with people, you will never succeed. Your dream will never come. It's just your dream. And then IQ is to make you not make stupid mistakes. It will make you live longer. Not, and the other thing in the future, if you want to be respected, you should have LQ, the Q of love. It's also very important. So these are the things, when you have these skills, EQ, IQ, and LQ. Most of students pay extremely attention to the IQ, but they don't pay attention to the EQ. If you don't have the LQ, you go nowhere. So all the dreams you have are based on these things. And I never know that I, was, uh, I, would, uh, I would be jumping into the internet time. And when I jump at the internet time, when I started my career, uh, the 1995, I studied internet in China, and f terrible years for four years, made a lot of mistakes, and 
you know, stupid mistakes and partner and all, all in, a, in, a, in a wrong way. 1999 was when I started Alibaba. I told my team that we may not succeed, but somebody will. <clears throat> and I never know and we never realized after 18 years we can achieve that much. So if it is your, your dream, you can never go far. If it is a group's dream, you can go further. So I make our Alibaba dream, not my dream, it's a dream of 18 founders. Later it become a dream, today it become a dream of 60,000 people. And we make the dream, try to making sure that everybody, we will try, our dream is to enable everybody can realize their entrepreneur dreams through the internet. So young people remember, don't worry about it, you know, you know, is that a silly dream? No, if you really believe it, it's a, it's a great dream. So believe something that you're really passionate about. Don't believe it because the other people think it is important. I never think, when most people like it, I don't like it. When most people don't like it, I will think about it. <laughs> this is that you make yourself unique. You are you. And doing business is about, do anything is about be, because you are so unique. There are about seven billion people in the world, but there is only one you. That's what we see. Yeah. So Dr. Ma, a lot of young people and a lot of students have a hard time sort of sticking to their dreams. So after one failed class or one failed acting audition, they immediately get discouraged. So what advice can you give to young people so that they can continue sticking towards their dream even in spite of all the obstacles? Yeah, one thing, when you have a dream, you have to think one thing. The dream is great. The thing behind the dream is tough, right? So when you want a dream is that you have to ask yourself what do you want to sacrifice? Not say, I want to do anything to get my dream, but you know, the, what, what are the things you want, really want to do? You have a failure, you have mistakes, people don't like you, people don't team with you, you know, all the stuffs. When you have a dream, you have to think the backside of the dream very clearly. So everybody ask yourself, what do you have, right? And what do you want? And very important, what will you give up? If you don't think about what will you give up, you will not have what you have. So, when I start my business, I know internet, 1995, 1990s, nobody believed internet in China would happen. So, I, if I want to sell my products, I know today as a salesman, I go out, 10 people. If I talk to 10 business people, 10 business people I always say no. Why people want to help you? People say, ah, nobody help me. Why people should help you? People help you, that is extremely you're lucky. People don't help you, that's very common. So when you go out, nobody, nobody have a deal with you, you say, yeah, I'm right, nobody deal with it. If you got one deal, you should be honored, extremely happy, because you're extra, extraordinary. So don't be discouraged when people don't help you. Why people should help you? You should earn the right to be helped. Right? This is, so when you have a dream, you have to ask what are the things you want to pay for the dreams. Okay. So that's a very interesting perspective, uh, Dr. Ma, really understanding what you're willing to give up. Now we want to talk about uh, this role model that you've always often talked of, rather often talked about in a lot of your interviews, Forrest Gump. Um, Oftentimes, you cite this quote from that, uh, from that movie, life is a box of chocolates. Um, but with that, we wanted to know more about how you stumbled upon Forrest Gump and what kind of, what kind of different perspective in the world uh, has watching that movie uh, given to you? Yeah, that's a very interesting question. The day I watched the Forrest Gump was in a friend's home in Seattle. And that week was my most frustrated, dismayed period. I was so upset, I was cheated by my friends, and I, I failed, like five projects all failed. 
So I almost just say, well, you know, because the, the people I work with, they are very smart. And um, we know that internet was not easy in 1995, 1996, 1997, but when we, we did not realize it's so tough. Then I was happened to be in Seattle, in my friend's home, and he had a video, the Forrest Gump would watch that. That evening, and I, I watched the movie, I say, we have to stay foolish with our dream. Don't think we are smart. We have to stay foolish with our dreams, and we have to continue. Be simple. Like Forrest Gump is very simple. He's not a smart guy. He continued to do running, running, running. He thinks that, uh, sub, he said, nobody, you know, he will only want to make business benefit from the catch shrimps. A lot of people want to make business, make money by catching whales, sharks, you know. You got to do business with the big companies. So I thought that time, yes, he's right. We should serve normal people. We should catch shrimps. We should support small business. So be simple. Stay foolish, and no matter what, you know, just to continue. And do not complain others. Only complain yourself. Check in, what's the problem with me? Did I change myself? Later, I found a lot of people fail because when they fail, they always complain about the others. Ah, that's his fault, that's that problem, that that problem. And only those people always check their own problem. These people survive. These people succeed. For years, for part of eight, 18 years, I don't think Alibaba and me complain a lot. If you complain, you have to have a solution. If there's no solution for complaint, don't complain. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's it. So in the movie Forrest Gump, you talked about the shrimp, right? There were basically days before they finally caught that big haul of shrimp. So Forrest had to go through a lot of failure before he got success. With that, you've always said to young people that they should be able to learn more from their failures rather than their successes. What do you think the types of failures young people make that they should learn the most from? Oh, yeah. Let me tell you that one day I was uh, reading uh, of yeah, reading a, a biography of general in the se after Second World War. And I feel impressed not is how much victories, successful battlefield that he achieved. I think, well, you know, if I were better, if I were a young man at that time, I could do better. <laughs> but I was impressed by how many suffers, the terrible experience that he survived. That surprised me. The grand, the grand grandfather always tell us, you know, oh, Jack, I've been doing that much. I made a lot of mistakes. I still surviving. I said, wow. But if he say, you know, I've been achieved that much, I say, hey, you know, if I were your age, if I were that time, I could do better. So people will feel proud when the day when you tell your grandson about how much tough days you have gone through. I think one day I share with my kids, my grandchildren, how much Alibaba have gone through the tough days, the mistake. Doing business is just like uh, go to the battlefield. The survivor wins. No matter how brief you are, you're dead. <laughs> People forget you within three days. <laughs> but if you survive, you always have chance. And go to battlefield is that experience the soldier know that how to hit himself and then fight. Young soldiers just to go out and fight. There are different reasons for success. There are various reasons to, for one person to be successful. But there are almost the same reasons for people who fail. Greedy, right. wrong team, Run too fast with too much money. By the way, you will never make big mistakes where you don't have money. <laughs> right? So people say, if I have money, I'm going to do a big business. No, no, no. <laughs> Remember that all the mistakes the other people made, you will make it. 
So you have to learn, if you want to be successful, learn the mistakes the other people learn, learn from the mistakes the other people make. Not because you will avoid these mistakes, because you know how to face these mistakes and troubles when these things come. When you suffer a lot of mistakes, we say, wow, this guy coming, uh, these mistakes come. How the Jack Ma did it, how Bill Gates did it, how Obama did it, you know, when the tough day comes. It's, it's not because you can avoid it, because when the, the problem comes, how you face it. With great attitude, then you succeed. Yeah. Um, Dr. Ma, other than that, uh, I think one time you also mentioned that giving up is possibly one of the biggest failures that a, that a person can do. But I think when it comes to young people, oftentimes you have our crazy dreams and we try to seek advice from older people or more experienced people who sometimes tell us that's not going to work or uh, this is how you make it work. How do we make it happen such that we still continue our dreams but at the same time, we take criticism, um, but we don't give up. Because more often than not, that's what happens. Yeah, if you have a crazy dream, don't talk to your grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <All right. laughs> um, if you have a crazy dream, very important is that you have to find the people around you. When, when we invest a company, I want not only looking at the founder, I want to see the people who work with the founders, whether they believe him. If he is the only person that believes in the dream, that's very dangerous. He's not a crazy dream, he's a crazy person. <laughs> but you have to find a group of people who are all believe, they're all crazy, something interesting there. <laughs> right? Because it's easy to make one person crazy, but if you make the whole team crazy, something interesting. This is what I did early days of Alibaba. I, I made a speech in America to talk about the value mission and management way of running an internet company. That was very early, 2012. There is a guy, an American guy, sitting there saying, hey, this is a crazy guy. Internet has to survive first, to make profit, revenue, forget about kind of value, mission, and team working. You know, this is, all, this is all lies. He said, you're crazy. I say, sir, welcome to Alibaba someday. So he came to Alibaba, spent a few days. The day when he left, he said, Jack, I thought you were crazy. Now I found 100 crazy guys in your company. Because <laughs> <laughs> we believe what we are doing. Yeah. It's easy to make you believe. But if you can make a group of team believe and continue to do it, then think. So I think there, if it's crazy or not, the only testing is the idea if you want to make a company, it sounds crazy, your customer love it. If the customer like it, your team like it, you know it's not crazy. If the customer does not like it, do not like it, your team don't like it, Forget about it. You have to change yourself. Do, even if you have a crazy ideas, don't believe you are always right. You have to learn. Alibaba in the past 18 years, we have changed at least 18 big major changes. We are not the Alibaba last year. Every, one, every year, we are different company. Right. So this is, you have to change all the time to be sure that we don't care about it, how the other people say, you are crazy. We care about, is this something really different? Really make the, make the difference? That's what we care about. So a lot of the students here are young entrepreneurs themselves, and they have a lot of crazy ideas, and they want to make those ideas happen. Since you're the UNCTAD Special Advisor for Young Entrepreneurship and Small Businesses, what do you think the role of young entrepreneurs and small businesses are in the country and help making the country grow? Good. <clears throat> Whenever I do want to do it, the, the first thing I advise I give you is think about what will you give up. Right? And next thing I want to give advice is how many years you want to reach for that goal. A lot of people say, I have this idea, I want to be succeed next month, <laughs> or next year, or next week. Forget about it. There's no such opportunity in this world that you can succeed next week. 
There's no better opportunity that can sit next to you. Because young people, most people like me, right? 18 years ago, we don't have money, we don't have technology, we don't have relationship, we don't have any powerful person supporting us. I started my business, 18 people, we only gather 50,000 US dollars. 18 people together in my apartment. So we don't have anything. And when I started Alibaba, when I started my internet business, year 1995, I started with 2,000 US dollars, borrowed the money from my relatives and friends. That was started. But I know one thing, people like us don't have money, technology, don't have any relationship or any things. We know we win for the future. I know if I, I start to do it, 10 years later I will win. And in the 10 years, what I will give up, who I will partner with, what the things will be differently, how can I live longer and instead of live happier. So the world is very interesting. If you want to live happier, you may live very sharp. If you want to live longer, life is very tough. Okay, you have to exercise every day, <laughs> right? So this is, this is the life balance. So young people, when you have a dream you want to do, and think about how many years you want to make this thing happen. If you think it's about three years I can be successful, prepare for 10 years. If you think I have five years to succeed, prepare for 15 years. And then if you think 10 years will succeed, you may succeed in eight years. So you should have a long preparation, determination. And these are all the things you have to think about. There is no great opportunity that will make you succeed next week, next month, next year. There is no this, this fancy great idea. That's really crazy. Yeah. I think I speak for Mikey and everyone here. This might have been 20 of the most insightful minutes of my life and our lives. So thank you very much for sharing your knowledge and experience with us. Thank you. Um, on behalf as well of everyone, uh, thank you very much. So we'll remember that to find out what we're willing to give up. Make sure not just IQ, but EQ and LQ as well. And lastly, never ever stop believing in our dreams. So thank you very much, Mr. Ma, for your time. And thank you on behalf of the students of De La Salle University. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ma. Uh, Jack Hello, Jack Ma, now Dr. Jack. <laughs> First of all, uh, I'd like to thank uh, uh, Dr. Jack for an insightful discussion earlier. Uh, we were talking about a framework that uh, I've been doing with the government for the past so many years, which focuses on money, I mean, mentorship, money, and market. The three most powerful M's in really helping our micro and small entrepreneurs. And uh, I invited about 50 entrepreneurs here, most of them from the brick and mortar business. A number of them are in the digital economy. Three of them are quite successful and they will share their insights and questions with you. And uh, I think the brick and mortar are here because they're scared of the changing landscape, the destruction that is happening in the way things are happening. So I wanted to ask you, uh, do, re do the old economy or the brick and mortar businesses have to fear that much? What is their solution to preventing themselves from disappearing? Yeah, I think the, uh, the old economy should not fear, but they should change immediately. The past 20 years, internet technology changed the world, but this, it will speed up next 30 years. And every three years, it's just like 30 years. So if you do not start a change, it's going to be tough. It's going to be really tough. I'm not scaring people because I've been doing that in China for years telling people that the new business model, 
So how, in, in, just like the older days, if you're using horses and buffaloes to, and the other guy use electricity, you don't have chance at all. If you are doing business, still think about I design and I make and I sell called B2C, but the other guys, because of the new technology, they become consumer to be, consumer to business, they become C to B, they become tailor made. They're using the logistic, so, the so social logistics to network. They reach the market quicker, faster than you are. Not only, they're using the internet to find the customers abroad, across the board. They're using I, data technology much cheaper. You don't have a chance to win. So I think please change quickly. It's not a competitor killing you. It's the future kill you. If you kill yourself, and how you can change, embrace the change. Do not be scared by technology. Technology, I would say today, is so simple and easy. The only thing, spend the time on that. I think because you're an entrepreneur, you're smart enough. If you really sit down together for three hours deep learning, it will change. A lot of people just don't like it. I, I, I think I don't. It, the world is so diff this world is so difficult to change a successful people. Successful people have a millions of ways to tell you, I succeed yesterday. So you guys, okay. So let, let us learn from young people. Today, technology, internet technology are so simple, so easy. And most of the internet companies like us, we give them free technology, free services. Why not try free? Young people, because they try free, they succeed. So I would say, don't be scared. Don't be fear. Fear. Just to go ahead. If you don't use it, it's just like last century, you refuse to use electricity. It's going to be dangerous. And by the way, it only takes about first three years. You will be totally different. We talked about the three M's. One of the three M's was mentorship. La Salle is a great school. Um, great, wonderful school. I still have to get my diploma. I studied in La Salle, but I still should finish one more subject. That's the irony of all things. And I agree with Dr. Ma because uh, you need EQ more than IQ in a sense. All my life, my passion is to help many of our micro entrepreneurs. And we discussed the level of poverty here is the cause for our drug problem. And for us to enable our small entrepreneurs, many of them are survival entrepreneurs, to lift up from poverty, we have to create the next part of the two M's, which is the money side and the marketplace. What are your views to enable these people to cross and be able to access the money and the market? Yeah. I think first, small business must, must have big dreams. And big companies should have small steps. Big companies always think of big. You will fall down. Big companies should have small steps every week, every day, every year. I must reach this small. But small dreams, small companies should have big dreams. I now today serve 20 customers. How can I serve 200 customers in two years? How can I serve 2,000 customers? What are the ways that I can serve 2,000 customers? How can I make these 10 customers who are using my services that be happier, healthier, and continue to be. We try to make every customer of my company to be the advertisers or salespeople of our company. Because in this way, you have to make sure your, your product's good. But <clears throat> the government should build up the infrastructure of commerce. What is the infrastructure of commerce? Is it the mentorship? We should have a lot of uh, business schools, not necessary MBAs. I'm not a particular fan of the traditional MBA. The MBA, they make people sometimes very stupid. 
because business is you have to be flexible you have to change yourself to me not it's it's not <clears throat> it's not like uh, everything can be standard right so we have the mentorships and we also have the money reaching market reaching and also i think the technology reaching so what we call is that this country i cannot see i know a lot about the philippines but when i see over 100 million people 99% of the business of this country are small medium sized companies we should build up the infrastructure for supporting small business making sure that every small business are able to reach the money and today it's impossible to let the big banks to do it we should use a new technology to do it which i call inclusive financing can be done by the internet technology today alibaba in china alipay we serve more than half billion people young people in china using mobile phone payment we don't have so many credit card system credit card in china but people say ah jack you know it's impossible to do the payment in china in the past 15 years people keep on criticize us say how can you do payment online you don't have a check you don't have a credit card system you don't have a credit system you don't have enough banks how can you do credit because we don't have the check because we don't have the credit card system we make the most advanced payment system in the world so philippine i think you have the opportunity to make the world the best tech thing or fintech in the world because you have so many mobile phones you have set more than 7000 islands it's impossible for banks to have offices in 7000 uh, covering everywhere but mobile phone covering everywhere we should make philippine a cashless society when you have a cashless society everyone rich money when cashless society no no corruption and life is easier totally agree <laughs> we have basically the two telco guys here are in a school of globe eric alberto of smart and pldt blame them for the slow internet <laughs> now honestly honestly it's unfair to blame anybody <laughs> let me see this where is the opportunity opportunity exists in the areas most people complain if you can solve the complaint you have the chance when we started alibaba the speed of internet in china was terrible much worse than today's philippine oh much worse <laughs> right at that time not even 3g but that's not an excuse for mobile phone companies to to left slow speed has slow speed services faster speed has faster speed services but it's a great opportunity for for the telecommunication companies to invest this investment i'm guaranteed you will get the return back they're going into the 4g now so that's going to speed up the internet i think it's this is this is the opportunity for everybody if the 4g the 5g's continue to it's going to make the country good make everybody good and finally will be good before we go to the students to ask question i wanted to just call two uh successful tech pioneers robi antonio uh briefly can you ask a jack pan question hello morning mr ma um the smartest people in the world seems to be very divided uh in the issue of um uh, blockchain technology uh what is your current stance towards this i seem to have researched that you're predisposed toward it and how does that conflict with the overarching goal of china banning it um the exchange and the technology say it again blockchain technology. blockchain and bitcoins okay. and cryptocurrency okay bitcoins right well i'm um, i'm a believer of the blockchain technology and uh we have a specific team 
in the company, Ali Enter Financing, focus on researching on that. Because we are believer of globalization. We are believer of free trade. In the future, the global trade, global business, globalization, there are a lot of money transferring. What is the safest way? What is the most efficient way that to do that? So we put a lot of efforts on that. So I would say, let me say this about technology general-wise. Company like us, we should not win our market by advertising dollars. We should win our market by innovation. Alibaba should not get our profit from the size of the business. We should get our profit from the technology that will be invested inside. We invested heavily nine years ago study on cloud computing and big data. Now for financing, we invest heavily on blockchain. But Bitcoin and this, I'm not a big fan of that yet. Let me say this. Um, company like us, I think last century, if you have a technology, you want to keep it to yourself. Today, in 21st century, if you have a technology, the only way to make you powerful is enable others, even enable your competitors. So we, Alibaba, we spent billions of dollars on technology. And when we spend the money on the technology, we were making sure this technology is inclusive to the others. So blockchain technology is the big investment that we invest in on that. But we, as I say, we also would love to partner with others. others. Got it. Okay. Um, Robbie basically raised uh, money on uh, his company called Revolution. He this is the first Filipino company who valued it at one billion U.S. dollars. So congratulations to this guy. Yeah, thank you. I I have another uh, very successful tech company here, uh, Nick Stoliedo of Surpass. Nick, can you ask your question quickly? Hi. Good morning, Jack. Uh, my question is around the EWTP uh, initiative that Alibaba has taken. Uh, what are the implications of this for Southeast Asia? And I guess more importantly, uh, for traditional businesses and retailers, uh, how should they view the EWTP, knowing that it can be very disruptive to their current business model? Thank you so, so much for this question. For EWTP, it stands for Electronic World Trade Platform. A lot of people don't like globalization. I think globalization did a fantastic job in the past 30 years. They pump up the global trade, but it's a growing pain. It's a still a baby, only 30 years old. The thing, the problem is that it benefits 20% of the developed countries. 80% of developing countries don't have chance. Young people don't have chance. The globalization the past 30 years was controlled by 60,000 big companies. We think should at least 16 million or 30 million or 60 million small business, young people should be able to sell. Small business like anybody sitting here, entrepreneurs. Philippines, think about how you can sell your small business here, can sell products to China, to Korea, to Europe. As long as your service is good, product is good, you should be able to compete with any big companies. This is my belief. So EWTP is trying to build up a platform, not organization. I feel sorry for WTO. When you put 200 government ministers in a one room to agree on something, impossible. <laughs> right? But if we put 2,000 business people in a one room, we can agree on something. The only thing we want to do business. So EWTP, we work with WTO, is the, the 2.0 version of WTO supporting small business, young people, that we encouraging every government to set free trade zones for small business. There are so many free trade zones in any country, but all these free trade zones are designed for big companies. For small business, 
if you want to sell things outside the country, the government will never give you 24 hours custom clearance. Big company can, you cannot. So we want to build up a process, a platform, a way of doing business. Then every small business, you can global sell, global buy, global pay, global delivery, and global travel. And you can have a marketplaces online, and this is what we believe. I, we come here, Alibaba come here to the Philippines. Last night, I arrived like at 10 o'clock. We had a meeting, did not, we had a meeting until later 12, for two hours discussing how we can build up the infrastructure of doing business in Philippines. The payment system, the marketplace system, the logistics system. When we build up that, the purpose is to making sure these small business can sell their things to China, to, to the other part, to, to Malaysia. Now, the EWTP, the first project we launched is in Malaysia. And we hope that every country in Southeast Asia can join the EWTP. Every country have a free trade zones for small business entrepreneurs. They're a marketplace rich, they're money rich, logistic rich, mentorship training rich, and IT rich, so they can do business. This is what I want. Anywhere in the world, any young people in any country, open a mobile phone, you can order products from everywhere in the world, and then get the products within 72 hours. And this is the goal that we want to reach in 20 years. And EWTP today, the first sample we are testing in Malaysia, very good, so far it's very good. So when we have that model, we will bring to Asia any countries if you are interested in. Thank you. And the last question from uh, Mr. Leviste. Uh, the youngest uh, entrepreneur we have here, uh, he, uh, he dreams of putting solar panels in everybody's rooftop. And he, how old are you? 20, 24. 24. 24. Just 24 years old and he's... Uh, I just finished my university at 24. <laughs> Go ahead. Your mission, sir, to use technology to uplift developing countries is so inspiring. And apart from the slowest internet, the Philippines also has the most expensive electricity, the worst traffic, and many other worsts. So I'd like to ask, <laughs> what are your other ideas, apart from e-commerce and fintech, to solve developing world problems in energy, infrastructure, and agriculture to end poverty in the developing world? Thank you. Thank you so much. Well. Let us just say this, people consider Alibaba is an e-commerce company. First, we're not an e-commerce company, we're an e-commerce enabler. We do not buy and sell ourselves. This is the first. We are different from Amazon. Amazon, they buy, they sell, they are e-commerce. We make, uh, we help other companies to be e-commerce. Second, e-commerce is less than 20% of our business. So. Alibaba listed in New York State stocks. That's only 20% of our business. We ask ourselves one thing. 18 years ago in my apartment, our dream is to survive. Our dream is to making sure Alibaba will survive and be a system business. And today we have six, close to 60,000 employees. We have so much cash. We have the greatest technology of the internet e-commerce. We have all the resources we have. What we want? Are we want to make more money? We think we should be the engine of innovation of the world of this century. We should be a company of the century, not the company of China, of company of Hangzhou. We should be using all the resources data, people we have to enable. The, if you want to be a company of the century, you have to make difference. So we think we want to build up using these resources we have to build up the infrastructure that every young people, every small business, every woman can leverage this, techno this technology and infrastructure to do business, to culture. So this is our dream. And this is, I feel more excited about 
our revenue income, our profit income. Although we have a good revenue, good profit, we love the things. We care about the job creations. We care about the efficiency of people doing. We care about young people have opportunities. We care about women leaderships. These things we care about. But if you really ask us what we will do for sustainable growth, what's the meaning of life? Is happy and healthy. We think after internet, we should make in people that be happy, be healthy. So happy and healthy industries are something that we want to do. If you want to be healthier, healthy food, healthy environment, healthy water, healthy air. If you want to be happier, you should have the belief, you have the value, you have the dreams. I don't want to make this, our company become a company, a machine of making money. And this is how we do it. And uh, to sustainable growth is that when you are healthy and happier, you can be, ha you can be sustainable. And if you want to be healthy, environment, water, food, and psychologically you'll be happy. You should have a belief, religion, culture, uh, education. These are the things that using technology, if we can empower these things, we are the company that I feel proud for working day and night, that it worth it. Otherwise, it does not make any sense for making more money. I cannot spend a lot of money. This is the tie up I've been given by, you know. I don't, I don't dress like, uh, I don't wear watch, or no rings, no necklace, I think, you know. How much money you can spend? You can only sleep one bed, you can only eat three dinners. That's so true. that's the meaning of life, and this is what we want to do. We have a couple of questions to the, from the students. Are you ready? Where are you guys? Oh, yes. uh, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, so our esteemed guest, uh, Dr. Ma, has been most kind to agree to answer some questions for our students. So for the students, please introduce yourself and tell us your year and major before you ask your question. Okay, students. Hi, okay, Mr. Yeah. Japma. Um, I'm a third year industrial engineering student. Um, my question is, what would you consider to be your biggest failure in life? And what did you learn from this experience that you can share to us students? Thank you. Uh, the, <laughs> my biggest mistake that I don't want to make is the day when I retire, the company collapse. Right? This is what I w don't want to see. Because everybody will sick, everybody will get old, everybody will die. We've been working hard for 18 years, and this company won't last 102 years. So we will never see Ali Alibaba is successful because we're only 15, 18 years, there are 84 years to go. In the last, next 80, 84 years, we may have a hundred times or maybe one minute chance we disappear. So my job as a founder and CEO, how can I keep this company growing when I retire, when I leave this company, it still continue to grow. This is why I don't want, when I'm 80 years old, 70 years old, I'm st still working the company. I want, I should die on the beaches in the Philippines or Muffin, you know, <laughs> not in the, my office. Because you don't want to see an older guy sitting 18 years old still be the chairman. That won't work. So every day I'm thinking about is what if I leave the company, the company can continue to grow. And if I cannot make that thing happen, this is the mis biggest mistake that I will make. And the, the lot of mistakes I do is that I can share a lot of uh, ideas. The day when I retire, if, I, if, uh, if I'm a good at the writing, I will write a Alibaba 1,000 with mistakes. Any mistakes, for, for example, when you, have, uh, when you raise money, a lot of people when they raise money, the first thing they were, they were looking for a fancy office building and decorate it wonderfully and start to hire great people, especially hire people from multinationals. That's a big mistake I've made. 
when I, when I have the first five million US dollar foundation, I start to hire people who used to work in the vice president of big companies. But when they came, they destroyed us. Because when you are a tractor, you borrow a Boeing 747 engine, put it inside, it's going to destroy your tractor. You should not find the best of people. You should find the right people and working with them, develop them, make your team the best of people. There's no best people in the market. The best people is always in your own company. That's the mistake I learned. And I want to share with you. Thank you. Uh, next. Okay. Hello. Good morning. Uh, my name is Solen Lafo. I'm a third year entrepreneurship student. Uh, firstly, welcome to our university. Thank you. And thank you for visiting us. My question is, based on your experiences, what are the friendships that endure time and the ups and downs in life? What are the, what are the hello, my, hello. Quest, my question is, based on your experiences, what are the friendships that endure time and the ups and downs in life? What are the friendships that endure time and the ups and downs in life? Okay, the friendships, right? Well, um, I think the thing that makes me go through all the top days are the friendships. Um, the, let me say in this way, I don't invite any of my friends to join my company from the first day. But when they join my company, I make friends with them. This is the advice I give you. Don't invite your best friend to form a company with you. <laughs> don't. Totally agree. No. <laughs> yeah, don't. I see so many tragedies. There are cases may succeed, but most possibly you will fail. It's better to make friends when they join the company, treat them. But when the company is that big, you cannot make friends with anybody. We can make colleague friends with them. So friends means when I'm in trouble, I talk to them. I talk to my, I talk to my friend, uh, my colleagues, troubles. Even to today, early days, whatever problems I have, the company have, I tell them openly, I trust them. Right? What's the wrong? We don't, we, we're going to run out of money in three weeks, so what are you going to do? <laughs> don't shock them by problems. So, friendship means based on trust. My team trusted me, and I trust them. I know my team can do better than I, than I am. And I know they can survive. They will, they, when, when they are in trouble, I spend time with them. When I'm in trouble, I found many of my friends came to talk to me. They helped me. Yeah. Friendship, well, the difference between, as a, uh, let me tell you this. Business is about a friendship building. Friendship is about trust building. When you don't have friends, you don't have business. When you don't have trust, you don't have friends. That's all the thing. Very simple. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, next. <laughs> Students, okay. So, hello, Dr. Jack. Uh, good day. I'm Gio, and I am a third-year psychology major student. So, and here's my question. <laughs> so, the trend today is that there are many young people who do things simultaneously. So, there are, they have their full-time jobs while doing their studies or doing part-time work. Well, there are others who also wanted to pursue their plans or passion in doing business uh, and open up their businesses. So in the perspective of prioritization, what advice can you give to these young people who wanted to pursue their dream of doing business while doing these other tasks? Say that again. <laughs> Make it simple. Okay, so given that the young people of today have a lot of things that they wa really wanted to do, uh, what advice can you give to the young people of today uh, in terms of 
uh, prioritization, what advice can you give to them? All right. <clears throat> That's good. Uh, first, let me say, uh, young people have a lot of things to do. He wants to do a lot of things. It's better than a young people without anything he want to do. A <laughs> lot of things you want to do, at least you have hope. I like these kind of people. But you have to focus on the things. And how to focus, what's the priority? My way, it's not maybe not correct. You have to pick up the things that you are really passionate about. You love to do it. When you do business, you have to do things you believe in. You love to do it. If you're not like it, if you don't like it, you cannot sustain. So you love it, and you have a passion about it, this is my priority. Do not pick up the thing that is important, or your father said it's important. You don't think so. It will go nowhere. So priority to me is when you are tiny, pick up the things you, are, you love, you are good at, you know that I can last long. Don't pick up things that is big, that will never last long, and the other people think it's big. So this is something that I, that I was... And uh, by the way, the priority of your choice of doing, whether study or work, are the same, learning. When you do the business, you learn from the business. When you school, you have to put the, all the knowledge into practice. I, uh, a lot of people wonder, will, will leave the school without getting a degree and then go to, go to do business, be entrepreneur. They say, Bill Gates succeed. He did not finish the school in, in Harvard. There is only one Bill Gates. Don't do that. <laughs> right. Today is much easier. Your school in the daytime, in the evening, open a shop online and buy and sell. Start to learn. It's a great experience. All join the students' union, support the people. All work in the part time, the weekend, support these entrepreneur school uh, companies. Be a, 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 a uh, uh, you know a person there work in the weekend. You learn. So. Sorry, I speak a lot today because I, I don't think we can speak every year, but I, I want to tell something that is helpful. When you are 20 to 30 years old, please find a good boss. A good boss is better than a good company. A good boss will discipline you, train you, develop you. When you're 30 to 40 years old, try to do something. If you really want to do something yourself, try to do it from 30 to 40. When you're 40 to 50 years old, do something you are good at. Don't do something you don't know anything about. But when you're 50 to 60 years old, focus on helping young people. When you're six, over 60 years old, spend time with your grandchildren. <laughs> this totally is just 80%, right? Not everybody, but most people doing that. Uh, Jack, uh, there's an entrepreneur here. Um, yeah. A woman entrepreneur, a serial entrepreneur. Her name is Miley Villanueva. Uh, Myla, you had a question for Jack. Is there a mic? Microphone. And after this, uh, we have two questions left for the students, so please prepare. Hi, good, good morning, Dr. Ma. Um, your friend, Masa Sun. Um, has raised and uh, is deploying a hundred billion dollar vision fund around companies uh, uh, deploying the power of AI and the Internet of Things and talks about singularity. I wanted to know whether you agree with him, you talk about it, and what are your thoughts uh, around the area? Okay. Thought on the AI? Yeah, I think Internet of Things are the future. And artificial intelligence is, is, is such a hot topic. Um, this is something different from the American way of artificial. I don't think artificial intelligence is a great, is a good word, proper word. I believe it's called machine intelligence. I don't, I think human beings have wisdoms. Machine have intelligence and animal have instincts. Today, the artificial intelligence is trying to make machine 
think like a people. Human, be human beings only know 80% of their brains. And how can you make machine to learn from the 80%? And for example, when we judge people, we use human eyes, we take pictures, we, we analyze. Why machine should they take the picture, analyze like human being? Machine should have some machine ways. So I think today artificial intelligence in the Western is, it, yeah, it's, it's good direction but the wrong way. And Alibaba focus on machine intelligence. Machine should do things that human being cannot do well. Machine should learn like a human being, but machine will never be able to think like human being. Human beings have the belief, have the religion, have the value, machine may not have. So, what I would say is that all the university, especially primary school, kinder schools, we have to be very careful. The way we teach to our kids today will may make our kids 30 years later cannot find jobs. Because machines are much smarter than human beings. They can calculate faster, remember faster. So if we teach our kids the way we taught in the past 100 years, our kids will not find jobs next 30 years because machine will take a lot of jobs off us. What are the things the machine can never do? This is something the education system, every country should pay attention to that. So this is what are my view about artificial intelligence. And because of the data technology, everything, most of the, the internet of the things, is going to be made in internet, everything will be connected to internet. Thank you. Okay, I'm sorry, uh, we only have, yeah. One, I'm sorry, one question, one final question from the students and, okay. And this will be the last question. I'm sorry, we don't have much time, so thank you. So, hi, Dr. Ma, I'm Jola Kotaran, third year industrial engineering from the Kokongwe College of Engineering. So my question is, what is the one global issue that you are personally passionate in solving? Yeah. The global issue that uh, concerned me, there are a lot, but I think, um, as I say, sustainable growth, that every young people should have opportunities. And how can we have the young people up to have opportunities? We should enable them by technology, and we should change the education system, improve the education system. This is something worried me. If we do anything to control or improve the environment. But the way we teach kids, young people, are the same way we thought in the industrial time. It will go nowhere. So the thing I concern most is about education. We are okay now. If we do not know enough knowledge about what caused the environment problem, what caused the in non-inclusive problems, so these the things that we teach our kids, the education systems, that is the priority, because I was trained to be a high school teacher. I think a good education system. Let me finally, I'm the, thank you. I'm very honored to, to be given the doctorate degree. But I was considered to be a bad student Primary school, I never passed examination for key primary school. Never got good middle school. Never got, I spent, I tried a three years for entering a university in Hangzhou. I never be the top 10 students of my class. Traditional way of education, I was considered to be a failure, a loser. But the way we do. So what are the things, something that we can do for the future. This is something that I'm thinking a lot about that. This is something concerning me. When we have a good education system, when we train our kids better, our kids will not make the mistake that our ancestors and our generation have made. This is something that I concern. I want to really want to put efforts on that. Dr. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Ja Dr. Jack Ma, Mr. Concepcion, ladies and gentlemen. That was all the time that we had for our engagement. We are most grateful again to Dr. Jack Ma for graciously uh, sharing his insights and ideas with us on behalf of the LaSalle University 
Thank you very much. Now, uh, since this is for the students,